Yo, what's poppin' folks? It's your boy Tatro here. And we are back for some more Fire Emblem Heroes. And today, very special, we get to talk about what is arguably the greatest resplendent artwork in existence, and possibly even the greatest artwork in Fire Emblem Heroes, period. Of course, I'm talking about Resplendent Eldigan. Now, unfortunately, I was not able to give you guys my live reaction to his art because, of course, they teased his artwork during Christmas, if I'm not mistaken. And I wasn't even home when this guy's artwork dropped. I was at my mom's house and we spent the night there because, of course, holidays and whatnot. So also, because of that, I wasn't able to do the Resplendent Delphia video. So my apologies to everyone that was kind of hoping that I would do that video and I ended up not being able to. It all just had to do with the schedule. I was very busy at that time and they dropped all this stuff on Christmas. So unfortunately, I didn't really have the chance to get to it. But regardless, Resplendent Eldigan, like, come on. <laughs> this hell attire, making him look straight up like Count Dracula. This is exactly what I signed up for when I bought the Fae Pass. If we can get more artworks like this, I would be as happy as possible. In fact, let me tell you guys, there's so many characters from Jugdral that are so well dressed, like typically the males, if they just went ahead and gave us some more hell attires for them and made them look like Castlevania characters, I'm sure everyone would be happy with it. Like come on, who wouldn't want a resplendent Reinhardt? where he looks like Richter Belmont or something like that. I'm sure a lot of people would be down for that. And just resplendent Reinhardt in general. <laughs> Come on, Insist, make it happen. The fans are just dying for it. But with that out of the way, let's actually go ahead and start talking about the builds for this guy now. So if we take a look at Eldigan's base kit, he comes with Mistletane. And it's basically just minus one special trigger. He also has Growing Light. Fury 3 and Lunge. So not the most impressive of base kits, unfortunately, but this guy came out very early on into the game's lifespan. So there's not too many base kit units from way back when that actually would be able to impress with their base kits now. So it's not really his fault. And recommended IVs for this guy, I gotta say go for plus attack. It's gonna help you out in the most amount of builds you would wanna run on him. But he does have a super boon in speed, and at higher investment levels and higher merges, the plus speed IVs do actually start to matter. So it's going to be up to you whether you want to go plus attack or plus speed on this guy. And simply put, if you're going to run a budget build, then plus attack is probably better. But if you have all the investment on him, then plus speed starts to look a little bit better. And for our budget build, we are going to be borrowing the weapon from Alucard, <laughs> aka Ares, the son of Dracula. So Dark Mistletane, very powerful weapon. It's got minus one special trigger and then built in special spiral. Pretty cool because you can cheat special spiral onto these cavalry units that are not normally able to inherit that skill. So it's pretty cool on them. And pretty much the idea is just get into vantage range and then you'll be able to spam bonfires left and right. Pretty much killing everything in your path. So it's a pretty solid build. The only bad thing is that Ares is summonable as a 4 star on these banners. And he can basically pull off the exact same build. And in fact he probably does it better. Because Ares has a higher base attack than Eldigan. Regardless of the plus 2 bonuses from the Resplendent Alt. So, I would recommend just using Ares instead of Eldigan, which is a shame because Eldigan's artwork is so god tier that it's just a shame that we can't really use him too well. Otherwise, though, this is a very good build. All you gotta do is stay clear of units that have Hardy Bearing or Fire Sweep or Dazzling Staff, and you should be fine. It's also not a bad idea to have units that can help him charge into Bonfire a lot quicker. As soon as you activate that first bonfire, pretty much everything should be smooth sailing. So maybe like Quick Pulse is a good idea for the seal, even though it is going to tank your damage by a little bit. Or you could go for Legendary Hector or Valoria for the support. And moving on to the high investment build on Eldigan, 
<laughs> it's literally the exact same build except with this encounter. If I'm being honest with myself, like, there's really not too much that Eldigan can do that some of the other more available cavalry sword units can do better. Like, for example, we have Ares, who I already mentioned. Basically, he does this exact same build, but better. And he's easier to summon on the banners. And there's also Eliwood and Kempf. If you want to run a unit for, like, Aether Raid's defense or something like that. Both of those guys are going to be way better than Eldigan. And they're both way easier to get merges on. So, unfortunately, Eldigan is in a very rough position here. The competition for Sword Cavs is just way too stiff. Especially when he's 5-star locked and doesn't really offer all that much else that you could already get from Ares. But if you are a huge fan of this guy's artwork or you just like Eldigan in general, he's not really going to have too much of a performance difference between Ares. So feel free to just run whichever one you like more, I guess. And finally, we have a super high investment build here. This is where that plus speed super boon that I was talking about earlier is really going to pay off. So if you happen to have an Eldigan at plus 10, with the plus 10 from Dragon Flowers, and now the plus 2 to all stats from the Resplendent Bonus, Eldigan can actually start to do some pretty interesting stuff. So the Refined Mistletane has minus 1 special trigger, and it also comes with Fury 3 built in. So maybe you might be thinking, oh, well, all stats up 3, is that really that good? Compared to, I don't know, Asbel who we just got. And that dude has plus 5 to all stats on his weapon. Yeah, I mean, the stat difference is definitely going to be apparent with some of the newer weapons. But there's a very key difference here, and that is the fact that Eldigan's Fury 3 on his weapon is actually giving him visible stats as opposed to invisible ones. So if you were to combo that with Fury 4, you can raise Eldigan's visible stats really high, and it's going to make him a prime target to soak in chill skills or bright shrines and dark shrines and have him play a support type of role. You're also free to run any rally skill you want and then go for a ruse skill. I would recommend attack and speed ruse, but attack and defense ruse or defense and res ruse, pretty much whichever ruse skill you think is going to work out the best is going to be just fine. And you can go for a faint skill as well. Probably a faint skill that has a stat that is not targeted by the ruse skill. So you're going to be able to turn Eldigan into a giant stat ball and also a decent support and ruse type of unit. And if you wanted Eldigan to be the one to get all the action, then it's really not too hard to tweak the build in his favor. So you could go for attack and speed push 4 over Fury 4 if you want. It's not going to give you as many visible stat bonuses, but the focused attack and speed is very nice. And with all the chip damage he's taken from his weapon and then the possible A skill, Desperation is not a bad option for the B skill. You could even try Brazen Attack and Speed as the seal. And really just pile on as many stats as you can onto this guy. And Desperation is pretty solid too. Like if you wanted to run Heavy Blade for the seal, you could go for Bonfire and hit the foes twice in a row. With Bonfire being the second hit. Or you could go for Gale Force even and just hit the foes twice in a row and ramp into Gale Force. So, at max investment, Eldigan's definitely got a lot of options. Except, like I said before, are you really going to have a plus 10 Eldigan unless he's one of your favorite characters? This is another example of a unit being 5-star locked that really doesn't need to be. Because there's no point in building Eldigan over units like Eliwood or Kempf or even Ares instead. So, a little disappointing that most people aren't going to be able to can make the most out of this awesome artwork here. And it looks like our next resplendent hero is going to be the young Tiki. So shout outs to 380. I'm sure 380 is going to be very excited to see this. And we have Tiki wearing the Embla attire, which I guess makes sense. We have a lot of girls wearing the Embla attire like Sophia and Veronica and stuff. So I guess it's not a bad fit for Tiki. Maybe the fairy attire would have been okay on her as well. But I don't think the Embla attire is a bad choice. The only issue I have with this artwork, though, is that her head is a little bit too big. <laughs> it's like Big Head Tiki. And her original artwork was honestly one of the few day one arts that I actually thought was really good. 
She just looks more bubbly and happy in the original artwork, and I think that suits Tiki a little bit better. Whereas she kind of looks a little bit more somber in the Embla attire. So let me know in the comments section down below what your thoughts are on Resplendent Tiki's art. Are you happy with it, or did you prefer the old one more? Definitely comment that down below. And that's going to wrap us up for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed the builds for Resplendent Eldigan. And I'm definitely hoping that we get some more artworks that look like this. <laughs> but a man can only dream, right? But anyways, that's all for today. So this is your boy Tacho signing out. Thanks so much for watching the video, guys. And I will catch y'all again on the flip side.